Hello. Welcome back to Shady Harbor. I am stressy and depressy. I mean, little fox. I'm just gonna chill today. Nothing crazy, just chilling. I hear that uh, the Crucible is going to be doing community uh, debates soon, so let's see if I can get a spot or two on that. Because that'd be fun. Alright, um, where was I? What was I... Okay, this is something that I didn't know I could do. Okay. That's weird. Okay. around have being strong enough to push that around okay um where was i Wee. was i out of something i can't really remember um what do i even have in my inventory oh well what else let's uh just fill up my inventory anyway while i'm up here shall we yeah i think that's a good idea but yeah Bit of struggle today, but um, get online. Ah. Okay, so it was that. That was that off. I've got another that. Do do. Uh, pipes. Ooh, what a matter. That kind of pipe as well. Ooh. I'm really working through this stuff. So my concrete tower. Seems to be working pretty well. Um, I know I'm gonna have to make more of these eventually, but what else? I think we good. <laughs> so yeah, I built up a uh, water thing. I've got my power linked up temporarily, I guess. I basically just need to start moving a truck in through here, I guess. Uh, and I also need to have the truck be able to get to here. So I might as well do that now. Doesn't matter. So let's change my concrete standard. Where am I crouching? Okay. Ooh, yes, I can finally delete this thing. Ha! Bye bye!
Here's the question, facing it that way or that way? Well, the center point is there, so it's not really going to matter in the long run for my build, but... Just Sophie, how are ya? See ya. That autosave shits me so much. Some cats don't have the gene. Oh, yeah. See, that's my favorite kind of drained. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of my cats to get high. Yeah, I know, I know, but some of them just aren't, just don't have the gene that enables them to do that, so. What am I doing? Why, why, why is it not doing it right? Hold on. Oh, okay, that's why. Vehicles as well. That'll do. It is limestone time. Oh yeah, check out, check out, see, do you like my um, concrete uh, building? So this is my concrete factory. I've built it so basically I can mod, it's modular. So I can build it up as high as it needs to go as, as much as, if I ever, if I need more, I can ju I just build it up more. That is literally the opposite of me, Joe Sophie. That is the opposite of me. I like lulling people into a false sense of security and then, like, turning the tables. It would be boring if we were. I think it's awesome that you like that. I think it's even more awesome that you know that about yourself. That's pretty fucking sick. Like, what, you're 19? And you know that about yourself? That's fucking awesome. I only started learning stuff about myself recently. <laughs> yeah. Right, so how many do I need? On a learning train. <laughs> Fair enough. You like your hair being pulled? Okay. No, my, one of my exes used to like that. Woo! See, this is the inside of the 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 first floor. Man, wee! Yep. Up to the second floor. I have my the first of my uh, machines. So the refinery. All right. So I've I've overclocked this to two hundred and fifty percent. So I need. Oh, why am I doing that? All right, one hundred twenty per minute. Uh, da 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 One hundred twenty times two point five is three hundred. So basically. Twitch chat must be bugged as shit. Why is that? Hey, shame. I remember it always being quite bugged for you. So this is this will give me three hundred enough for one. So basically, it w it used to be that, wasn't it? I remember it being pretty shit.
That's fucking annoying. Oh my gosh! Alright, so I'm gonna- I, I need to change the autosave, because this is really shooting me. This is a pretty stable game though, so... Half an hour is fucking nothing. There we go. I just want to, like, not have to have it, like, just pause every five minutes uh, while I'm trying to think of how I want it to look. Next. Oh, yeah? If you're masters. So...
Gonna go with the lower design. I've changed the design of the roads, so I might as well change the design of, that I use for these. I got a particular way I like to build these, so. It is good. So what hobbies were they? Tell me more. Tell me more, tell me more. Did you get very far? Alright, hear you out. I'll hear you out. Dinosaur, probably a T-Rex riding a big low lane, Gus Max, getting 2 AK. Tattoo idea. Ra riding a pig, huh? Wait, what kind of pig are we talking? Are we talking the, uh, animal or the, uh, tool of the bourgeoisie? Nice and pink and small. Mm -hmm. Sweating its ass off. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Picture that in my head. I'm gonna keep this going, yes it is. Oi! Hose up alive, how are ya? Welcome back, friend of the show, Oza for life. But here's the question though. 
Am I going to... What kind of input am I going to have? You know what, I'm going to change it. I've got a better idea. But I've got a good, uh, this is a good starting point for this. Happy Whopper Wednesday. Yay. Wait, you have Whoppers for me? Fucking give, give, give Whopper. Uh, I'm, I, I was hungry. Give. Unless, unless you're like lying about the Whopper, which would be an awful thing for you to do. Like, why would you do that? Why would you lie to me about getting me a Whopper? Uh, Rob McElhenney. Yeah, I'm just waiting for him to become too problematic, you know what I mean? It's only a matter of time. Alright. Yeah. Neil. Ah, season five bloopers. Is that able to be? Ah, fuck it. I'll react to it in a sec. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Three, I'm I know, banging a broad. I know what it says, Frank, but if you were listening earlier, we're gonna make adjustments to the script. You know, shit like that doesn't fly. Blah, blah, blah. How about a blowjob? Oh. oh. Hmm. No? No. I, I don't like when you say it. Look, a hand job or I'm not paying for this. I will never be overweight. I gotta look good for the ladies. I'm into ladies. I like girls. <laughs> I'm into ladies, Charlie. I like girls. Wait, what? This is season 15. He came out as gay. Wait, wait. are we looking at, uh, like, spoilers? Season season the 15 spoilers? Because I haven't watched past season 10. <gasps> yeah, I know. That's never going to change. <laughs> Listen. I'm into girls, okay? Yeah. I'm into ladies, that's never gonna change. Dude, I know. Listen, I'm into girls, that's yeah. never gonna change. Ah, yeah. uh, I thought <laughs> thought maybe. Mark my words, I will always be into slamming them ladies. I like girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop, Mac, just stop, yeah, all right? You stop, okay, not everything has to be about identity, all right? You know, if a man wants to stand, he simply stands. He doesn't go, oh, I'm Dutch now. Does a Dutchman ever stand? No, and if a Dutchman wants a sandwich, he eats a goddamn sandwich. He doesn't go. <laughs> well, I, I'm from. I'm from. Uh, wherever uh, Dutchman. Dutchman. Well, Dutchman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dutchman. It goes back to his okay, Dutchies. If an Italian stupid. needs to go to the bathroom, he doesn't go. I can't use the bathroom right now. I'm supposed to be eating pasta. Okay. <laughs> you know, if an Italian's got to go to the bathroom, he doesn't go. I can't go to the bathroom. I should be eating spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go to the bathroom. I mean, it's spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> hey, sissy, you all right? You hit your head pretty hard there. I'm fine. Leave me alone, you small-haired cunt. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, my. It's Love a joke. It. Do you understand humor? Yeah, it's just a joke, bro. Oh, oh. D, D, well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. D, 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 you got something to say, Charlie? Oh. Oh. D, I was just gonna say, we're gonna <laughs> Oh! <play> <laughs> oh, you don't understand humor? Huh? <laughs> what else? Yeah, we could really use your positive attitude. Oh, yeah? Hey, I got news for you, pal. Oh, could you? So, if I have an Irish half brother, and I can read Irish, I think that makes me more Irish than you. Yeah. 
You watch your what the mouth. What's going on? Does, you watch your mouth, you little mongrel piece of shit. Uh huh. All right, I'll, I'll take oh, that parcel tongue. I'll wrap it around. You're gonna your challenge throat. me to a game of Quidditch? You, I take. <laughs> She's supposed I'll to be. All out. of them are fucking I'll, awful. I'll take you out, man. <laughs> That's the joke. Get back, get back. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> What's I'll do it, going I'll on? Do it. I've got too much respect for the written word. Is that what it is? Yeah. I'm like, you, you, wanna go, you wanna look up and see if they got a karate book in here? This is an ancient. Yeah, this is like a museum, uh, dude. Just take one swing. <laughs> this is ancient, yeah, man. Take one swing. Like, not, 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 not. This guy's a pussy. <laughs> no, <What's going> on? <laughs> the problem with libraries is there's too many books. There's too many books. <laughs> oh. The problem with libraries is too many books. Oh, okay, cool. I gotta, I'm gonna... <laughs> the problem with libraries is there's, okay. there's too many. <laughs> Just watch your step, okay? Uh -huh. I don't or, like where this or, is headed, muggle piece of shit. Else? Wait, I'll take you down, dude. Did he say muggle? Go ahead and try. Well, no. <laughs> the problem with libraries is too many books. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna go straight Good to the source. Observation. I'm gonna call my mom. Okay, do that. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, listen, D, we're gonna buy this rink. Do you wanna be like part owner with us? Yeah, we could really. <laughs> Okay. Hey, so look, we're gonna buy this rink. Do you want to be like a part owner with us? Yeah, yeah we could really use some of your positive energy. Uh, yeah. Will you be a part owner with us? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, please. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you you want to be a part oh, owner? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, Dave, we're gonna buy this ring. Do you want to be part owner? With us? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Don't eat those. Okay, what's in the soup? Are the meatballs turds? No, no. No, they're homemade meatballs. I pinched them out myself in a grinder. What? You pinched them out himself? <laughs> Frank. What? You eat a meatball. Shit. You want me to eat the meatball? Yeah. All right. You cut the trolley. You, cut the wait, 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 you can't cut the make of the trolley. Oh, useless. <laughs> Go ahead. Get a meatball out, Frank. Get it. <laughs> Okie doke. Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh, right. no. You want me to eat the meatball? Yeah, eat the meatball, Frank. Eat the fucking meatball, dude. Eat the meatball. Mm. Eat it. Hey. Alright, go ahead. Grab a meatball, scoop it out. Things a little small for this, but I'll get it. I'm so confused. No. Really? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get it together. Yeah. I, uh, just eat one I break. eat it. I eat it. Eat the fucking maple, dude. Mm. 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 Chew it. Mm. Chew it. Mm. Chew it. Mm. Frank? Mm. No, 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 no. Shelly mm. doesn't want one yet. Mm. Chew, it. <laughs> Chew it. Wait, Danny, look at me. Chew it. Oh, 
also, D, about your friends, um, not for nothing, but like I think one of them had like crazy diarrhea in the women's bathroom. Oh no! Yeah, like. Ooh, I like that top. <laughs> that got you out of the corner of my eye. Yeah, I know it's sad. It kind of looked like someone um, like uh, took a water balloon full of chocolate ice cream, just chucked it against the wall. Oh, yeah. oh, the yeah. wall. Yeah. Oh no, went all the way up the wall. Yeah, yeah, which was a bit surprising to me too, you know, because I, I don't know, maybe she was like trying to tie her shoe or something in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, oh, like baby. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't know if she was like, thought she was finished and she was just like trying to tie her shoe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she like. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I don't know if she like she thought she was finished and, and was like trying to tie her shoe or something, but it oh, shot all the way up. Sprayed it like a cat yeah. or a skunk or something. Yeah, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. It was real bad. It was real bad. And, like, she, you could tell she made an <laughs> And you could tell she made an effort to clean it up too because there was like a couple streaks across, but then she probably. <laughs> What can hell? What the fuck? I'm sure she did. <laughs> you know, you tell somebody to have to clean it up too because there's like a couple streaks across. <laughs> you tell that she probably made an effort to clean it up too because there's like a couple streaks across it, you know what I mean? But I'm sure she gave up on it. Like, she threw out a paper towel? Yeah, or yeah, I think it did look low on, low on, on, oh. uh, on the toilet paper and then she probably start crying and stuff too, I would imagine, because oh, it's super embarrassing. I, <laughs> I thought I heard something. I. I <laughs> I thought I heard something. <laughs> I thought I heard something for, uh, from here because there was a scream. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, you caught me a little off guard, is all. Uh, so you're looking for a castle? Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. ah, is he ah, all right? Ah, 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 oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. Is he all right? What the fuck? What the fuck am I even watching? Alright, right, which season did they jump the fucking shark? Cause this is what- what the fuck even? This is just what the fuck even? They just like... Have the show for the sake of having the show at this point. What the fuck are they even doing? I don't understand. What happened? This is worse than the fall of Bill Nye. Yeah, he's okay. I mean, yes and no. He he he's a mongrel. Gorgeous, gorgeous, amazing, amazing. <laughs> you small head, yeah, you small head cunt. I like that, yeah. Very Australian of her. Wait, she's not Australian though. <gasps> it's cultural appropriation. I'm much quicker at doing this now that I've figured out, uh, like, the quickest way to do things. Or a much quicker way, at the very least. Don't know about that one, though. At the end of the day, haha, I can't see it anymore. <laughs> right, motherfuckers. Game over. Alrighty then. Alrighty tidy. Alrighty tidy. Oh my gosh. Well, that's it. That ain't a good thing. Well, fuck that then. Well, we're just gonna do it like this then. No bothering around with making that a certain way because I don't wanna. Ah.
Okay. There we go. Alright, so that's the road kind of done. Let's have a look and see what patterns we can do here. Frog icons. Trucks, no parking. Pat wrecked your hand while you managed to clip one of NLs. Oh. Are you okay? Oh, kitty. You got skilled. Are you okay as well? Am I gonna go all the way over there to... Yes. Yes, I am. You'll see what I'm gonna do in a sec. Copied. Wing.
Keep falling down. Got a lot of macros. Here we go.
No. Cool. We good. Hmm. No. That doesn't work. A 1k mild road trip. Going in and coming out, convince me the old roads ruled out that flat off the earth is a wrong. How so? Why is that not working? Wait, what? That's fucking weird. Weird snapping, I guess, but it, but there's quick and easy ways around it. Now I've got a platform ready, but I don't have any power for power going towards it yet. We pull that. Time for another corner of chapters. At some point soon, I'm, I'm going to do some more uh, workshop stuff, I reckon. Housemate seems to be, reckons that he's okay. 
Jordan reckons that he's okay um, with me using some of the more like louder tools inside. So hopefully that'll be okay. I might bring my router and my drop saw in to work on some of this stuff. Ooh, am I gonna be starting to take apart my uh, old mall? Yeah, smelter. Oh, oh yeah, brother. What you call me? I know I'm being I'm 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 being a bitch. I know. I, I'm still. I, I am still being a bitch, though. shit across. I'm gonna have to build a like a raw um a raw material output hub at some point. Also, I put all of my concrete away where I but I need it. Yep. I haven't finished the top yet. Yeah. I'd have a lot of fun with that, not gonna lie.
I've got um yeah I've, I've got a pretty good uh, good mask for pretty much anything, even protests. Oh yeah. Have you have I shown you mine? Oh yeah. How this how this looks. Oh, it's just off. Man.
doing corners is the, is something I haven't done before with this type of uh, thing, so that's why it's taking a little bit longer for me to figure out what I want it to look like. That's better. To be honest though, just delete these and do the same thing. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Rather than waste time trying to get it absolutely perfect. Like this will work just as fine. Just as wheel. Yay, corners. One, two, three, four, one, two, Hey Nola, how are ya? I'm just sorting out my power lines. Living the nightmare? Mood. Fucking mood. Oh, roo, roo, roo. Oh, 
there's dog barking in the background. You can't hear it because of my damn day, I think. But, yeah. It's a cute donkey walking past. That's the one benefit for having the, like, all my setup in the front room now. Is that I can, like, see all the cute, see all the cute, uh, dogs walking around. Those doggies. I seriously am addicted to this game though. Send help. That nightmare be hella fucking shit. I definitely feel you on that one. Grossy and depressy. It's me. hell my my ai that that ai is so fucking good like right then the the loudest fucking car just went right past that's crazy uh
wire is too long. Fucking loom. Living the dream. Yeah. The fuck dream are you talking about? Dream. Definitely understand the nightmare. This is, yeah, this life is a fucking nightmare blunt rotation. What are they fucking talking about? Subscription. Oh, thank you. Oh, really helps out. Every little bit. Yeah. No, I know how that is. He's signing stuff in the pen leagues and he's le legit miffed and pissed and it makes me feel good because he's a literal king, more money influence power than almost everyone, he's a miserable salty beach. Oh hey, I turned it on. Yay, at night time this is gonna light up. Now all I need to do is pop down. A lovely truck. The only problem is right now, trucks don't have any. Fuel. I need to build a fuel station. She it. It's going to be a whole new project, and I don't want to start a whole new project right now. At least I've got the truck station done. Almost finished the factory here. Just 
gonna do the upstairs bits. Alright, I'm gonna get myself some food. And I shall be back. Ah. Alright. It's an unsatisfactory. Oh, he signed himself in the pan of leaks and used it. Wait. I don't know how to do the Gary Newman voice. Randy Newman. Randy. You got a friend in me. You got a friend. <laughs> Let's just do. Let's do some squats. Some slap squats. There we go. See, I can prove that I'm a real slap. Watch it. Watch this. Check, check, check this out. This is this. I'm a real slap. Yeah, that's right. That's how a real slap squat. Yeah. <sighs> Good time. Like seriously, my my microwave is so old that it's got an analog dial on it. No shit. Check this shit out. Actually, I'll let me. Find, I'll, I'm just gonna take a picture of it. I keep forgetting that I've got a nude on there. Not my phone, and I keep on getting like, oh shit, it's moving my top off. Fuck. <laughs> ah, noob king, king Charles. Oh, okay, announcements. Ugh. Okay. <sighs> this is how old my fucking thing is. Hold on, stream. Yeah, that's how old my um, my microwave is. It's got a analog dial on it. That's how amazing it is. Check that out. It's old. I don't even know when like this thing was made. Yeah, the Twitch chat I think has been acting a little bit weird. Don't hate me for, like, mixing up my lasagna. I just, there's a lot of cheese in one chunk, and I need it to be spread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Lasagna. Yeah, Boo made it yesterday. 
He's fucking amazing. Ooh, predicts your how predicting your politics from your job. Like fucking hell. I've worked in hospitality, I've met worked in catering, I've worked um in sex work, I've worked uh, in disability care, aged care. Like I've been a cabinet maker, I've been a coffin maker, I I I drive, I can drive a truck. Like where am I placed on this fucking spectrum here? <laughs> Republicans don't care. And that's the end of the video. Truth. Democrats don't care. Each political party says, we'll solve your problems. And the mm. other side, they're going to take us in the wrong direction. How do we come to such different conclusions? We think our politics are formed by rational analysis. We watch conservatives and liberals weigh their ideas. Okay, so is this guy going to be a big, big brain um, libertarian? Consume competing media and then pick our party based on evidence. Consume. I just think it's funny how he's, how he's got um, the Federalist and the Daily Wire compared to like, I don't know, the Washington Post and Vox. Holy shit. Competing media <laughs> and then pick our party based on evidence. Show me the evidence. But it turns out something else is probably going on. I say that because I can predict your political party pretty accurately just by knowing what you do for a living. Okay. If you give money to a political party, the government requires that party to ask you, what's your profession? I sell propane and propane accessories. Verdant Labs took this information and made this infographic. It illustrates how people's professions predict their politics. People Beer wholesaler. Environmentalist. Well, no shit. Librarian. Fossil fuel industry. Limit, mostly bubble. give to Republicans. Teachers overwhelmingly give to Democrats. It's just weird. I mean, overwhelmingly Wait, what? give to Democrats. What's it's the relevance of that? I mean, flight attendants lean left, pilots lean right. Why? Rob Money. Anderson studies the psychology of politics. Pilots, their job is whether they take off and land and everyone's alive. Whereas for flight attendants, their job is more reliant on how do people feel about you. The job differences go on and on. Bartenders get. Are they really going to focus on conjecture based on like this sounds like someone basing basing their whole their whole um worldview on politics based on Freudian psychology rather than like materialistic like like materialistic analysis what the, the Democrats fuck? most truck drivers to Republicans business owners lean right artists lean left people who lean left tend to be more open more creative more interested in abstract ideas people on the right tend to be more conscientious more interested in sort of punctuality one more example most psychologists lean left very interesting conscientiousness is associated with conservatism wait conscientiousness Wishing to do one's work or duty well and thoroughly. Really? Huh. self discipline and self-control in order to pursue and ultimately achieve their goals. Okay. I didn't think that was... Uh, I thought that's a very, like, self... Like, I thought you could be conscientious towards other people, though. Just seems weird. In sort of punctuality. One more example. That's all, always how I've heard, left, left, heard the context people of people in the military left. lean right. You've lived and worked in both worlds. Currently, I'm a doctoral candidate in psychology in Cambridge. But before this, my life was a lot different. When he was 17, Henderson joined the Air Force. There, he says, most of his colleagues were conservative. He was sometimes teased for holding a liberal position. But it was all sort of good-natured. Not in academia, he says. Here he sees action. Yeah, exactly, Nola. Who the f hired you? I have a different vision. You should sit down. Henderson thinks it's because increasingly the left and right don't mix. 
80% of us have just a few friends or no friends across the aisle. At colleges, there are now few conservatives. This study of thousands of PhD holding professors found Again, more than 12 this is Democrats just conjecture. for each Republican. In sociology departments, it was 40. All you're doing is looking at numbers. I could like I could say I could just throw out throw out like a different different conclusion to this information. Looks like people who are more educated have more left leaning politics. What does that tell you? Four to one in communications, 108 to zero. Now I want your job to be taken from you. Spending all your time with people who agree with you can create hatred. This comedian jokes. If you're a Republican in California, but you better keep that to yourself. <laughs> People have no Republican colleagues, no conservative or libertarians that they're familiar with, that they get coffee with, that they interact with day to day. What do we call people that go willy nilly through life just doing things because it's- What has any of this got to do with like the, the policies that you support? Like, even if um, like left leaning people don't really hang out with Republicans and things so that um, left leaning people advocate for help those right wing people anyway. Why does that fucking matter? Feels good. Democrats. Is this just like, I think this is correlation. Well, I mean, like what I said is just as much correlation as he, as what he said. What, what I, I would have to back that up with more evidence and knowledge. I would suspect, suspect that that is the case, but that's just fun to stereotype people. The two symbols of the Republican Party. Oh my gosh, this is just, this is just a clip and show. And a big fat white guy who's threatened by change. But such stereotypes, even if they're funny, don't move us forward. Remember, the data show that our political views generally come down to who we are, this is our experiences and personalities. To understand the other side, shouldn't we talk to each other more? That's what we try to do. No. What a waste of time. I mean, you can do that if you like, but like, you don't change minds, you make like minds. Uh, don't waste your time trying to change the minds of someone who yeah, hug, hug an arty argument, like, no. Uh, I don't need your centrist lib opinions to do good things in life with the people who, like, actually care about me. I'm not going to waste my time on someone who wants me to be erased. Uh, some conversations aren't worth having. You know, the reason I have certain conversations online is because it, um, like improves my cloud and it, it, it's my job <laughs> that's the only that, that's the reason why i do that why, why i would have particular conversations with i would i would have conversations with nazis but that's only for entertainment pur purposes that's because it's my job to do that it's not practice it's not moving forward like you haven't spoken about any actual issues here this is just bullshit this is just an advert for a clip show all this is is a fucking clip show. videos bring both sides together to argue. The no, the full Babylon B interview. Definitely saving that one. We're succeeding. No, I don't know about that. Then both sides learn about the other side. Someone can hold so? different views but still be a good person. After all, so? most of us are good people, aren't we? So. So the fuck what? Our material reality doesn't depend on whether we're good people or bad people. Fuck your, fuck your like, morality bullshit. Give me material analysis. I don't care about your opinions. I care about whether you can back up those opinions with facts and logic and actual material analysis uh, based on the scientific method. I don't care about anything else. I don't have time for you. Unless it's to create content, in which case, yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy content. Mm -hmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Um, like if only Native Americans made more life rules. Yeah, that 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 would have worked. Owned in the marketplace of ideas, as Shabibo would say. Yeah, like it's the marketplace of ideas until someone talks it. Someone um tries to get someone else cancelled using their free speech to, to like take away someone else's free speech. You know. It's the intolerance 
of intolerance. Like they understand it, but they don't believe in it at the same time. So freedom of speech becomes the thought terminating cliche for that cognitive dissonance. Ridiculous. All right, I was going to do something today, wasn't I? Some more news react. Um, there was that chart. Yeah, yeah, I was going to continue looking at that guy's uh, chart video. Market. Um... What is uh, it must be in the history. Oh, your job. Scam. Sneako, Snoopy Lion, I don't remember that one. Ah, this guy. Oh, that's right, I remember which video it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, happy Puritan! What is a chud? Right wing. A, 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 a reactionary called basically. pathetic man. This is a chud, not not him. This this guy's based, but like the guys we're about to talk about. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be responding to a video from the YouTuber Achieve. This is a chud. Cheeto called pathetic male feminist tries to own me. We the more attentive yesterday. among you may have noticed that this video is about me. Uh, there I am in the thumbnail. That's me. And in this video, a Cheeto reacts to and criticizes a recent upload of mine, Incel Street Interviews, after going over a Twitter interaction that he and I had. So before we start, who is this guy? Well, Achito is a drama commentary YouTuber with about 300,000 subscribers. He covers drama between different creators like Minecraft YouTubers, streamers, and TikTokers, and does so usually in the format of a recorded voiceover while showing some footage of him playing video games. While not an explicitly political channel, there are definitely some political through lines in Achito's content. He's pretty staunchly opposed to body positivity movements, with many of his videos being explicitly fatphobic. He is highly critical of things like feminism, or whatever feminism means to this side of YouTube and generally falls into the same reactionary talking points that many Ah uh, yes, they're showing us the three olds. Have you seen have you seen um who the fuck makes their bed grow up and be a no I I make my bed. I like it being made because I love getting into a nice crisp new bed. But like um have you seen um uh the, the quarter poundering um the quarter pounderings um channel lately, by the way? Like, all he does- Can I get a countdown? Oh, fuck off. All he does now is upload shorts, uh, of, um, like, people- uh, of TikToks that he's, uh, taken off of lives of TikTok. And, um, and- and- and tries to get, like... Like, cause- look, look at how many shorts that he posts. This is all just stolen content. Stolen content, uh, from lives of TikTok. He's a fucking- he's a fucking Nazi cunt. Oh, actually, there was another one that I wanted to look up. If you like, may be familiar yeah. with. Ones you'll hear from your average anti-SJW, anti-feminist, anti-LGBTQ types. Like many of these types of drama creators, on top of covering other people's drama, he will occasionally start drama of his own. Or try to, at least. He's done quite a few yeah. videos directly. Failing to do it. Directly targeting other creators, some of whom you may know, some of whom are friends of mine. Hi, yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, see, this is what made me interested in looking at him yesterday. Oh, we, we watched, um, uh, the, the, the fucking, uh, Nick is not green one, and we watched the Noah Samson one, but, like, there's, there's horrible YouTube activist, apparently. Uh, this YouTuber can't stop lying. Uh, it's amazing. And with these targeted videos, he often uses highly edited, unflattering- And it, and in the video that he was talking about, uh, that Achito was talking about Noah Samson in, like, it was just this Twitter reaction, uh, like, Twitter, Twitter interaction, which was the most fucking- the biggest fucking cope ever, it's hilarious. ...or even blatantly dishonest thumbnails, like this one, about YouTuber and friend of the show, Nick is not green, where Achito edited the text to make it look like Nick tweeted at him, telling him to kill himself. So that's not great, just straight up lying in a thumbnail, Nick didn't say that. So with all this in mind, you may now be wondering, he does do that a lot. what are you doing, man? What's the point of responding to someone like this? Aren't you just falling for the drama bait? And, well, yes, I am. But that's okay, I think, and I have a few reasons for this. Firstly, to be honest, I just 
just thought it'd be fun. As I mentioned in my last video, I've been wanting to improve my argumentative writing ability. And these response videos have acted as training wheels in a sense, because they have a very simple format to follow. Play a little bit of their video, think about what they might mean if you can figure that out, and then respond, researching and debunking as necessary. I think this kind of practice will be good for when I want to tackle bigger, more serious topics. The other more important reason though, is that I do think there are some things that we might be able to learn here by breaking down this example of a Cheetos video about me. This video is on all accounts, a heaping pile of reactionary garbage. Most of it is just him making comments directed at me personally, not anything that I'm actually saying. And this guy, uh, this plus sized man decided to chime in. You talk like a middle school girl. Oh, look at him, dude. He's doing the yikes face, dude. Cause that's such a yikes, bro. Are men the biggest threat to women or are men the biggest? Oh no, fucking hell. Holy fuck. Sorry, I'm looking at something, this tweet. Uh, uh, I just saw this on, um, on fucking on the enough Vosh spam page. Uh, uh, Uh. Um. Oh my god! All right. I had to. I had to blur this one out because, like, yeah. Holy fuck! Holy fuck, my guys. So I, I don't know if anyone's been following Loner Box's slow like decay into lib shit, but like. So Lodabox says, uh, she, so, so is there any argument against Queen Elizabeth other than she was a monarch that had colonies? The response being, she made a few shitty public funding requests while sitting on a mountain of stolen wealth and land, but yeah, just general monarch stuff. The colony argument is probably the weaker one since Britain's whole transition from empire to state happened uh, while she was queen. Um, holy fuck. Um, so there's three pictures here in response uh one uh of british people like th this is all british people uh i censored it because there's a couple of de decapitated uh people in an asian country um slavery and all of that stuff but yeah definitely uh you can check it out yourself if you want holy fuck holy fuck yeah yeah, you know, the queen, the queen, the queen is just just uh, random monarch stuff. Random monarch stuff. No colonizing stuff. What the fuck? What the fuck. It's just like it's basically it's basic. If it's effectively like oh, you know, white people invented slavery, but they uh, they they abolished it too. That's that argument. The queen, the the monarchy um, colonized uh, a bunch of the a bunch of the planet, but uh, they they let them go, as well. Isn't they? Yay! Fucking what the fuck? What the fuck?
Like, like, even in America, like, Abe Lincoln gets, like, so much fucking love for the whole, like, um, the Bolshevist library thing. Motherfuckers, white people are just... They're, 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 congratulations, you did the fucking bare minimum. <laughs> true, happy Puritan, true. But yeah, stop giving kudos to white people for, like, abolishing slavery and letting colonized people uh, have their countries. It's fucked. Biggest protectors of women. These are- Bro, I promise you are neither, okay? He makes a bunch of unsubstantiated criticisms about my content without even having watched any of it. He doesn't even make it through a third of my video before calling it stupid and ending his reaction. Did you not hear that girl earlier who was like, yeah, I'm the prize, the men are the wallet. Yeah, she needs to be humbled. What? Like, what? <laughs> like, how are you going to defend that? I, I, I don't know. Let's move on to the next video. This one's stupid. It is lazy, mean, and bad <laughs> content. Reprehensibly so. But I do still think there are some points to be made here. By going through and critically analyzing some of Achito's rhetorical choices, I think we might be able to learn a thing or two about how reactionary content functions, how it is both communicated and interpreted, and how some YouTube subcultures have normalized these bad habits when engaging in online discourse. I want this to be a case study of sorts, an autopsy of a bad YouTube video. Achito is far from the only creator on here that makes these kinds of videos. So my hope is mm -hmm. we used to say white people like white white started straight the slavery is to pat the That's you know that I she's not she's not wrong. Not wrong. Also support the original creator. <sighs> that this analysis can be taken and applied elsewhere. Anyways, that's the plan for today. Sorry about the long intro. This is a bit of an experiment, so feel free to let me know how it goes afterwards in the comments below. I've left a Cheetos video linked in the description if you'd like to go watch it to make sure that I'm not taking him out of context. And yeah, okay, let's get started. Nah, but what's going on, guys? Today we're talking about a person who I was gonna cover a while ago after he tried to epically own me on Twitter, which, by the way, like, we're talking about a guy who is, I think, 25 or 24. If you still care about ratioing people on Twitter past the age of, like, 20, and 20 is pushing it, right? Like, you need to grow up. Somebody was, like, talking crap about me on Twitter and... Really? Put yeah, this is the bit, this is the fucking, this is the fucking, um, thing. Um, let's just give me reparations for it. Yeah. Yeah. Make up for it. Do it. And this guy... But yeah, this is the tweet. This is the tweet that made the guy fucking rage about it. He's like, oh, you know, if you care about ratios, like, 12 likes, one quote tweet. Yeah, so fucking angry. Uh, this plus-sized man decided to chime in for no reason, and- I'm so confused, though, like, um... 20, and 20 is pushing it, right? L like, you need to grow up. Somebody was, was like, so... talking crap about me on Twitter, and this guy, uh, this plus-sized- So, like, why is he calling him fat? <laughs> can someone- Can someone explain to me, like, why he thinks that Noah's absent is fat? Because... He not. He not. What, what the fuck? Projection. This man decided projection. to chime in for no reason, and he said, uh, really puts the L in Leafy Clone. And I was like, bro, I don't know who you are. You're some grown man in your 20s, and you're just, like, getting off to, like, just shit-talking me on Twitter. I was like, bro, that's pathetic. So I responded to him with, dude, this is how you're spending your 20s. <laughs> Remind me to kill myself if I end up this sad crying emoji. All right, so Achito says a bunch of stuff there, and there are a few things that I want to zoom in on. Right off the bat, Achito has mischaracterized the interaction that we had on Twitter. He says that this tweet is me chiming in about him for no reason, but that's not true. Yeah. I did have a reason. Yeah, it's about, like, it's about the material, like, reality that we're living in now. We need to make things better. It's not a moral fucking choice at this point. It's like, shit is bad for people today because of the things that were done before. Let's fucking make things better for the people who were fucked up before like we need to take care of the most vulnerable parts of our communities in order for the whole thing to be better fuck off with your morals this is just better 
A Cheeto made a rather mean-spirited video about a friend of mine, fellow commentary YouTuber Anna Marie Forcino. In that video, okay, he repeatedly bad. commented on her appearance, making fat jokes about her. Today, we'll be looking at the personification of those wooden mannequins you drew in our class, aka Andrew Tate. Was that supposed to be a joke? Like, serious question. Andrew Tate is a personified wooden mannequin? What does that make you, then? A personified Snorlax? Like, what? You can also pay Andrew an additional 36 pounds a month to learn how to make that cheddar. Well, listen, I'm not Andrew Tate, but the first step to getting your cheddar up is to stop eating it all the time. He also spent the entire video when he wasn't insulting Anna Marie, defending Andrew Tate. Andrew uses his online platforms to teach other men how to live a shallow existence. You've got to be kidding me, dude. Living a shallow existence? If being a multi-millionaire kick boxer that can do whatever you want and whenever you want is somehow shallow, then please miss his awful reaction video. That sounds pretty fucking shallow to me. What? That sounds that like he just described what being shallow is. This guy's like morals and values are like so different. Leftist grandstanding that I think is done as a response to their political impotence about not being able to correct the existing injustice injustices. Yeah, the, I mean, like, there's definitely, like, a lot of, like, online creators who think that what they're doing is some sort of praxis, and it's just like, no, no. What you're doing is a drop in the bucket. Um, you, you're, you're, this is, you, you, you've got a job, and your job is exploiting leftist values. Videos. Tell me, how do I live a non-shallow existence? I want your advice. So this is loser shit, obviously. And Anna Marie pointed this out. She tweeted a link to his video and wrote, Thanks for the free clout, Achito. Maybe cut out some of the fat jokes next time and actually make some cohesive points. That video from Achito has since been deleted, but before it was, I managed to screenshot the top four comments. And this screenshot was my initial reply to Anna Marie's I see that I should hide him, I personally do not like him. Either... Tweet. I was having a laugh and a giggle about how all four of the top like comments on this video were shitting on a Cheeto for defending an alleged human trafficker. And I mean, he ended up deleting the video, right? So maybe they had a point, who knows? On the thread, Anna Marie next replied, Fat L, referencing a Cheeto's rude and entirely unnecessary comments about her body. And the fact that the negative YouTube comments represent a Cheeto taking an L, which stands for loss. I'm being very thorough with my definitions here because my mom watches my videos. Hi mom. Then we arrive at our final tweet, the tweet which in part influenced a Cheeto to make his video on me, where I call him a leafy clone. Now, if you know who Leafy is, you will have already picked up on what I meant here. But if you don't, nope. I'll just play a clip of Leafy now. I mean, first off, you got the streamer that's just sitting there saying, Stop! 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 Don't call me fat! My eyes are up here, honey! Oh my god, you wanna call me fat? Donate below and call me fat! I even saw this one bitch, her fucking title of her stream was Don't Donate Insults. Are you serious? Looks and sounds familiar. Oh, holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm jealous too. Fucking hell. I want my mom to watch my shit. Hi, Mom. Let's talk about sex work. <laughs> but yeah, like, that's like fucking scary. That's exactly the same shit. So I didn't know who the fuck this leafy person is. I, I just know that people reference it. Um, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> right they appear to be playing the same video game he's even doing the same little knife flip thing it's it's incredible i get it if he enjoys this game but like he's there are definitely the some steps you take here to he's mitigate the leafy clone allegations so what can we draw from this first oh and y'all are jealous you don't have something so that bushy and fucking like like gosh like the coverage is quite impressive to be honest example well i guess mainly that you just shouldn't take what anyone says on here at face value even for something as generally. seemingly insignificant as a mischaracterization like that the full context totally flips this claim on its head rather than valiantly defending his right to be online without anyone canceling him or whatever the truth is that he was just being a bit of a dick and people criticized him for it that's it and regardless of whether this kind of thing is being done with malicious intent or just out of incompetence or bias <laughs> it does usually end up being deceptive and i think that's bad it's a it's a bad thing all right the second thing i want to talk about here is achito's comments about my age he mentions a few times how i shouldn't be on twitter horsing around because i'm a grown man in my 20s Jermaine Greer can kiss my female ass. We're talking about a guy who is, I think, 25 or 24. This is how you're spending your 20s. He's 24. He wants to behave like a middle schooler. And the first thing I thought upon hearing these comments used as an insult is that sounds familiar. He's a 34-year-old grown man. Grown man. 35 and a 34 years old. Grown men in their 30s. You're a 34-year-old man. 31-year-old fully grown people. Yeah, so that was Leafy again. My guess as to why Achita would be making these comments about me was so that he must so Achita, so Achita is literally just a clone of some other, like, toxic YouTube. YouTuber. like what is so so like leafy 
Leafy got banned from something. There's a content cop from two years ago. I don't know if I can watch that. Before they were famous. Leafy response. iDubs. Hypocritical evolution of iDubs from content cop to hated. I found Leafy. iDubs stopped doing edgy humor. Wait, is there any good... Wait, what's this? Andrew Tate gets knocked out. Leaked footage of Andrew Tate getting knocked out in sparring. Leaked footage of Andrew Tate getting knocked out in sparring. Leaked Shit, footage was... of Andrew Tate getting knocked out in sparring. Oh, wow. He, got, he took a lot of those, eh? Hey? Fuck yeah. That was cool. There's leafy re-uploads. Reading triggered Tumblr comments about myself. Face cam leafy is here. I re-upload. Where is leafy is here? By the real leafy cast. About is forty six nine. What does that mean? What's forty six nine? Tate's Tate's um dad is black and his mum is white, as far as I know. So like If anyone knows any really good, um, like, deep dives into who Leafy is, like, let me know. But, uh... Okay, I'm get I'm starting to get into the weird shit. Be ...younger than me, right? So I went to check, and yeah, turns out he's 18, apparently. Now, to be fair to- What?! Bullshit! How does he even know who Leafy is, then? Like, what the fuck? If he's 18, like, how- and he's playing, like, Call of Duty and shit. Like, 18 years old, he's playing all these fucking old games. Fucking Crusader Kings bullshit. Right, so I went to check, and yeah, turns out... I don't need to be racist to Tate to call him out. But he's 18, apparently. Now, to be fair to a Cheeto here, 18... Motherfucker is... Motherfucker looks white, and he's treated as if he's white. I don't give a fuck what his race is. 18 is very young. Looking back, I don't know where I'd be now if I'd had a 300,000 subscriber YouTube channel when I was 18. In a ditch, somewhere, probably. It would have been way too much attention and validation for my young mind. So this is why I do think there's some leeway he's here. In a he's in a completely different class group. Doesn't fucking matter anymore. In terms of maturity. As such, I've tried very hard to be as objective as possible when analyzing the things that Achito is saying in this video, no matter how inflammatory they may be. With that said, though, at the end of the day, he is an adult with a large YouTube platform. Larger than mine, I should mention. And I do think that having this platform should come with some sense of responsibility around the things that we say. If someone's being deceptive or hateful, I think it's perfectly okay to want to call that out if they're reaching enough people with it. Just thought I'd mention that. Maybe you disagree. Uh, if so, let me know why in the comments. And yeah, okay. I have one more point to make about that first clip. And I do realize that this section is probably starting to drag, but he said a lot of stuff there and breaking it down is just, it's gonna take a while. If you're bored here, check this out. It's a photo of my cat in a video. Yay! Look who has joined me, baby -to. Babe. Oh! How adorable. Her name's Babe. Very cute. Babe. Babito. Enjoy. That's there you go. So, so in that clip, Achito makes a comment about oh, my know. weight, referring to me as a plus sized man. Just obviously an intended as I an insult. Know. And this guy, uh, this plus sized like man, edging. decided to chime hey! in. Now, I wouldn't have anything to say about this comment other than the obvious that it's what we'd call an ad hominem, a personal attack used as a stand in for any actual arguments. But then he Holy says shit, this. The whole that thing that made this adorable. interaction especially funny was because I was literally engaging with it right after I had gotten home from the gym. So it's like I'm being told that I put the L in Leafy clone by two plus size adults who lurk on twitter and like i should you not make video i i'm still confused i'm still confused noah's not noah isn't fat or why does he keep saying this 
Sophia is like, Neither quote unquote, that, that phobic the other comedy can, the, is the, the worst. No, bro, the worst is the fat. way you She's live your life, my dude. Way. So if I'm reading this argument correctly, but, who what he's trying to say cares? here is that he thinks it's ironic that Why two are you fat so people triggered are insulting by because he went to the gym that day and we didn't and because we're fat and also make content that critiques fat phobia, which he likely interprets as promoting obesity. That's how these types usually do. If y'all stop promoting obesity and applauding people who are fat, I'll stop quickscoping the people on my timeline that are like 900 pounds. And that's what I think. We are incorrect here or something even if I see see here's the thing like i thought that he was projecting but then i realized that his complete clone of this leafy is here thing or this person like this this like irrelevant person who doesn't is not on the platform anymore like he's just trying to recreate that so like he doesn't even have his own projections if I wanted to give myself an aneurysm trying to untangle this dumpster fire of an argument, at the end of the day, it's still something you might hear on an elementary school playground. You're wrong because you're fat. Yeah, but I, I, I honestly, like, I hear about them every now and then, but I have no idea what went on. I don't care about iDubs. I know he exists. Um, but yeah, like, I know that their existence and I know their existence was controversial for some reason and that, that there was a furry that was involved. There was something to do with furries and I have no idea about the rest of it, but like, but from what I can see, this guy is exactly the same, so. I'm not, and you lurk on Twitter all day while I go to the gym. So yeah, take Apparently that. They However, the actual fat phobic sentiments on display here are a much more widespread issue. He makes a few assumptions during this clip, but the thing I want to touch on is the last thing he says here about the way I live my life. No bro, the worst is the way you live your life, my dude. So my question is, how do I live my life, Achito? How could you know anything about the way that I live my life? His sense of superiority there was derived from the fact that he went to the gym that day and I didn't, but how would he know that this is me on july 15th of this year days before this twitter interaction when he felt the need to come is that him comment on my way oh it is him like that's fat to people i don't under i don't understand other than like the guy like but the thing is even if it's just the just this guy trying to the cheeto guy trying to insult him right it just comes across as a whole yeah what if i was doing dumbbell presents yeah fucking uh, like i uh i can't I, i'm pretty sure i can't lift that much wait so no wait that's 70 pounds i don't know how much that is in kilos hold on Yeah, no, I can't. I, I I can't do that with dumbbells. No. Um, my arms are weak. Yeah, I can I can maybe get get up to about twenty. So like. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Wait, because I wasn't at the gym or whatever. I probably was. He just assumed that I wasn't because of the way that I look. And stuff like this oh, is a fairly right. common... Sorry, like, this is pre-HRT, pre so probably, like, 15. ...expression of fat phobia. Hey, just wanted to add it's a like note twice the as editing much as I, can lift. I want to be clear in saying that the correct response to someone calling you fat is not to show clips of yourself working out. That kind of sets the tone of the response as you saying, you know, I'm working on it, okay? When you don't owe anyone that sort of response. Least of all, fat phobic assholes on the internet. I only showed this clip here as an example of one type of assumption someone might make about you because of your weight that does have more serious implications for people who are fat and are constantly True. dealing with fat I phobia. Get, I uh, just get, wanted to clarify that. I should so, get going. Yeah, back to the video now. Now, I'm not muscles. someone who considers themselves fat and I don't experience fat phobia in any serious manner. But this type of body shaming and assumptions being made about one's life choices are pretty well established examples of fat phobia. Thinking that someone looks- Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I just realized something. I got that clip. Sorry, I just thought that was funny. Hey, a fellow Phillips connoisseur, I see overweight and then just assuming things about their life, that they must be lazy, that they have health problems, assuming they want to hear your unsolicited advice about what they should do to lose weight, as if every aspect of society wasn't already telling them that their fatness was inherently immoral. This is the same attitude that contributes to things like medical fat phobia, where doctors will make these same assumptions about fat people, wrongfully attributing their symptoms to their fatness and telling them to just lose weight when the health problems originate from other factors, so they get misdiagnosed or things go untreated and then Holy they shit. die. This is this is made with almond milk. Ben and Jerry's almond milk. So it doesn't, it's, wait, does this have lactose in it? It's 
might not have lactose in it. Oh, fuck yeah. Anyone want some BJ? Anyone want BJ? BJ's and chill. This is a real problem. I'll leave some articles linked in the description about it. But okay, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that even small comments like the ones that he made can be outgrowths of much larger and more harmful systems. Making those comments is in some ways sustaining those systems by normalizing treating people this way in front of a large audience of people. They'll write it off as whatever bullshit tough love excuse they can come up with. But at the end of the day, it's just cruelty. And that sucks. I don't know. That's bad. There's my comment. It's true. I am. I, I, I was very expensive, but worth it. I feel really bad for girls who um, under, under sell themselves. They deserve more. Commentary YouTuber academic analysis. This is bad. Wow. Thank you very much for your support. Anyways, let's move on to the next section, which is... Honestly, the girls that walk, walk straights deserve twice as much as they earn my ad read. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. I'd always hated buying cologne. Too many choices. So stinky. But that all changed with Scentbird. They've made it really easy to find and try out all types of new fragrances. Scentbird is a flexible monthly subscription that lets you choose a new fragrance to try every month. They have colognes, perfumes, and unisex fragrance options from over 600 of the top fragrance brands. Prada, Gucci, Versace, Baba B, Vivova. You get to pick which fragrance you receive each month. But if you aren't sure where to begin when choosing, Scentbird offers a quick, simple quiz based on your preferences or any colognes or perfumes that you've enjoyed using in the past. It's pretty helpful. As I said, it's flexible, so if at any point you want to skip a month or two or three, you can with no fees or penalties. This month, Scentbird sent me three different fragrances, and they all smell delicious. They come in these cool custom bottles, and it's a 30-day supply. The first one I got is Forest by Rook Perfumes. It's a refreshing and natural scent. You got a little cypress, a little in cedar, a subtle pine vibe. Nice musk. The second one is Bespoke. No, not musk. That's what I think sex workers should do to John's because I don't want to get banned. Yeah, I like. I hope they treat them well so that they can earn more later. By Joseph Aboud. This one is lovely and sophisticated with notes of citrus, amber, vanilla, and smoked woods. You gotta get your nose on some of this stuff. And my favorite of the three, and the one I've been wearing almost every day, is called Leighton from Parfums de Marly Paris. It is warm and elegant with coffee, lavender, and fruit tones, leaving me going, wow, this smells great. You can choose from fragrances like these each month for just $17. But with my code, you My favorite thing is when um, right-wingers see, like, the adverts here and say, oh, no, they're not real leftists. They want money. You can get your first month for just a little over $7. Just use code NS55. Or click the link in the description to claim your no discount. Idea what Once you mean, again, but... that's code NS55. For 55% off your first month with Scentbird. Available. I just hope that, like, treat your sex worker well because she deserves to be treated like a queen. ...in the USA and Canada. Thank you, Semper, for partnering with me on this video. Link's below. Okay, now let's ah! get back to the video. Anyways, that's just some background. Well, I might, you might be surprised. I might be with you on that one, honestly. Like, at the end of the day, when it comes to sex workers, like a lot of the clientele that I see or used to see, we're very, we're, we're more uh, bougie types. I about my little uh, spat with this guy. I'm and the more bougie they were the weirder the stuff they wanted twitter before we talk about who he is you know so who who is this guy who am i talking about this guy's name is noah sampson and i mean just by looking at him you can kind of infer the type of videos he makes incel street interviews worst incel pickup lines incel content is dangerous vampire incel and then who could forget about the best video on this channel oh, I remember are that guy. people okay like bro you talk like a middle school girl like all your youtube titles sound like the posts on the instagram stories of middle school girls i must say i'm not all that familiar with what the instagram stories of middle school girls are saying these days, so he could be right, I guess. But there is one thing I want to talk about from this clip here. It might seem like a minor thing, like a middle school girl thing, but when a Cheeto rattles off that list of my video's titles in a sort of mocking tone and then makes that negative comment, this is actually a pretty common rhetorical device on YouTube, especially commentary YouTube. While you're introducing someone that you're criticizing, you might list off their video titles with some music behind it or something under the impression that your audience will pick up on what's wrong here based on how you normally talk about these issues. So he knows that based on how he's criticized feminism and anti-straight prejudice, 
in his prior videos, his audience will likely pick up on the fact that the person he's introducing is a little bit weird, a bit of a weird guy. And I've actually done this before in my own content. Here's a clip from a video of mine called Incel Content is Dangerous. Are you sub five, normie, or Chad? How to know when it's truly over. Why the black pill is so underrated in 2021. Four in-depth reasons. 100 black pill beliefs in one video. Warning, the gap between normies and chads is growing. Oh, they even have a four part series analyzing the mathematically, scientifically, objectively perfect male face. It's a similar thing, right? Listing off this channel's titles and- Y'all are weird. Y'all are weird. Like, your brain is wasted on that shit. Like, you should, he should be creating, like, I don't know, architecture or something. Thumbnails in a dramatic voice with intense music. This is done under the assumption that you, the Noah Sampson channel viewer, will notice that having skull shape measurements in your thumbnails or incel terminology in your titles means that you might be a slightly strange guy. Now, you might not have an issue with this. You might feel like this type of thing is meant is as a joke more than anything. A shared understanding within a community about the sort of meaning that we draw from certain signs on the internet. And in some ways, it is. And there should be room for that on. You're, you're, you, what you look like doesn't make you a chad. Being a Chad is how you identify it. YouTube, probably. But it's also kind of... It's like, it's like gender, type of Puritan. If you identify as a Chad, you are a Chad. Because what you, what you consider a Chad to be... Is what a Chad is. Poisoning the well, right? In both cases, we're presenting something as being bad or harmful or cringe without explaining why or even engaging with any of the content. And after seeing how Achito did it here to me, I realized that this can actually be pretty unhelpful, especially if somebody's watching that doesn't already agree with what you're saying, that doesn't already feel the way you. F but it's shame. What a Chad is, like, the definition of a Chad. Is, has a dialectic relationship between the individual and the society around it. The way you identify as a Chad changes the perception of what a Chad is in society to a certain degree. The more people that act in a certain way and call that Chad, Chadness, um, the, the more that uh, the concept of a Chad changes. It's just like gender. It's just like anything. That's how words work. That's how definitions work. Especially when you're when you're talking about like very malleable and plastic uh, cultural ideals. Mm. Hattery feel about the content being presented. Like it's a small but definite way to help promote an echo chamber. And I don't want that, so I'm not going to be doing this in my content anymore. I'm not saying that no one should, but just that moving forward, I don't want to. I want to try to provide explanations for things before making fun of them. That's just something I'd like to be cognizant of as a community moving forward. But of course, the difference here is that my opinion is evidenced by the text and a Cheetos is not. If you disagree, explain why. Anyways, let's move on. So finally, we arrive at the reaction bit where a Cheeto starts watching my content. The video of mine that he watches is Incel Street interviews. Now, I've already gone over a response to this from a couple of weeks ago, responding to Sneeko, it was called. So to avoid repeating myself, I'm just going to go over a few things from Achito's video that I haven't yet touched on and then try to relate these to broader points. So in his response, Achito does some interesting things. Firstly, there are moments when he tries to refute the points that I'm setting up before I'm even done setting them up. Content designed to portray and foster negative attitudes towards women. No, not all. Oh, oh my God, bro. Like that's such a little slimy rat like tactic that he does. Yeah, dude, these videos exist to make people hate women. No, they don't bro it's just to like interview people and show people the result of it a similar thing that he does is asking questions i love it i love it i love it how, i love how he just like says oh you know interviews are just interviewing people but bro you're looking too deep into it bro you know what i i honestly honestly i've changed my mind i think he i don't think he is an old man i think he is a kid i i, I don't think this kid understands how the world works which is fucking weird to, to hear those words coming out of my mouth because it's such a cringe thing to say you know what I mean? ...that are later directly answered by the content of my video, but because he doesn't actually finish my video... Let's move on to the next video, this one's stupid. ...or even really pay attention to what I'm saying in the part that he does watch, by the end of it, these questions largely remain unanswered for him and his audience. If we look at the reception of this content, we can see that this agenda is being onboarded by the audience. What agenda, bro? Like, they're literally going out to people asking questions and getting honest responses. I should mention that at this point in his reaction, Achito is only 1 minute and 30 seconds into my video. So when he asks what agenda I'm talking about, I'm gonna tell you about it, Achito. Just let me get through 
through my intro, please. Returning viewers of the channel may recognize the reaction on display here. Get to the fucking point, bro. Get to the point. What's the? We understand what the? Everyone knows what. Creepy. He does a similar thing later on in the video when I'm setting up a point by first making a concession. Now, if you're someone who watches and enjoys the It's Complicated channel, channel, I'm not here calling you an incel. I mean, yeah, but you did say people who consume it are being affected by a channel who's fostering negative ideas against women. Like that makes no sense, bro. So like you're saying, you know, people are incels, but they're not. Like, what are you saying, bro? So he almost perfectly summarizes my argument there that the channel is fostering misogynistic attitudes and that this can lead to incel rhetoric only to ignore this argument entirely and act like I'm calling people incels, which is what I just said that I'm not doing. It's really frustrating, you know, because he's so close, but so far, but okay. I bring up these examples here because they represent a pretty well-established limitation of the reaction video format. If you are making a video about another piece of content and you don't at least watch the video beforehand so you have a bigger picture of what the content is, this is called pre-watching and is considered a federal crime among many live streaming communities, then you're opening yourself up to the possibility of jump- Wait, what's wrong with pre-watching, by the way? Surely you'd be able to come up with better reactions and better stuff if you re if you pre-watch a video. I mean, it depends on what it is. Like, I don't want to pre-watch, um, like, short videos, but, like, if I was to watch, like, a full, uh, you know, hour-long uh, debate stream and then take notes and then come back to it later with you guys like would that be a fucking crime i mean i guess if i was pretending that it was a first time thing but like again it's all it's all a performance jumping to the wrong conclusions about what's being said and this is nothing new on youtube but i guess again if you're building your profile on that I build my my profile and the way i act around the idea that i am trying to break down those and um, like really reinforce those understandings of what parasocial relationship is and try and get meta with that shit so i suppose it would be a different thing for me to do it rather than like a just a random person who does reacts which is what i am but I try to be a little bit meta with it. I'm reminded here of an older video from the video essayist Sean called Sargon of Akkad Can't Read. This is from all the way back in 2017, but it's still one of the better examples I've seen of this phenomenon. This whole getting everything wrong, but never going back to correct myself because I forgot or I just don't care thing. Sargon reads one line of an article, then pauses to go off on tangents and make a bunch of assumptions, some of which are contradicted by the evidence on the screen that he just hasn't read yet. Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and Google Home have women's voices because women's voices make more money because people prefer them. Uh, yes, Carl, because people prefer them. It even literally says that currently on the screen. A lot of this has to do with prior bias. You feel a certain way about a thing, and admitting or considering that you might be wrong about that thing, that's a hard thing to do, especially during a live reaction. You will always trend towards coming up with some half-baked excuse as to why the opposition is wrong. Now, I'm not saying here that we should expect every content creator to write a video essay every time they have something that they want to say. Part of what can make commentary great is those instant reactions, because the people who are good at it are able to be fair to the source material, or if they're just genuinely funny, they're able to sort of sidestep those requirements, branding it as strictly entertainment or comedic commentary. But if we want to argue for something, politically or otherwise, as Achito seems to be wanting to do here, he's debunking my video, right? Or trying to, at least, then surely we can do better than this. What agenda, bro? That's such a little slimy rat tactic that he does. People are incels, but they're not. Like, what are you saying, bro? Like, at least having the integrity to allow whoever's trying to make their points, make their points before chiming in to tell them they're wrong. What I think is probably likely is that Ichido and other creators like him, they have a format that they've been using for years. You know, play a video, then pause it to make a snarky comment, and then just keep going. No need to backtrack or address prior counter arguments, because that's not why the audience is there. They are there to hear him do the epic, angry, shouty gamer guy stuff. And with this approach, his channel has been doing just fine. So why bother changing it, right? And this is where I will assert that, well, he should change it. Because when he does stuff like what he did in his video about me, it's just terrible content. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean, it's dishonest and it's lazy. And it doesn't give viewers the full picture of anything that he's talking about. Just mindless preaching to the choir about how I'm the bad guy, feeling zero urge to actually explain this position, taking everything he can in the least charitable way possible. And although I can't make him change any of this stuff, maybe something I've said or will say here might get him or his audience thinking. Because that's the thing, it's not like he's going to stop making content anytime soon. So may as well see if it can improve somewhat. I don't know, just a couple thoughts there. L moving on. So as we just looked at, Achito is very opposed to the idea that these interviews could be framed in a way that promotes misogynistic attitudes. He repeats this sentiment a few more times. This guy Noah is saying basically that these videos will lead to people thinking that all women are liars, and then his little evidence for supporting that claim is a clip of 
Sneeko obviously like being dramatic for the camera and saying that this woman is not a prize and calling her out for being full of herself in this interview. Like, what are you talking about? That's such a reach in logic. That's, a, that's like a stretch, bro. So I thought it'd be fun to put this idea to the test by analyzing his own reaction video because he did mention having reacted to this interview channel before. Don't be like these women. That's the name of the video. Seems fine. This is important because as I've pointed out in prior videos, this interview channel is a huge content farm for the Manosphere, Red Pill, and reactionary type channels like Achitos. So covering this again can't hurt, I don't think. Just to clarify things that maybe weren't made clear before. So with this particular interview, titled You Think You're a 10, the majority of the video focuses on a two-part question-answer setup. First, the interviewer asks these women who is better at self-improvement, men or women. He then follows this question up by asking them to rate themselves on a scale from 1 to 10. Who is better at self-improvement, men or women? Women. Self-improvement, definitely women. Okay, rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. Hands across the board. Oh, period. Okay, isn't saying you're a 10 admitting there's no room for improvement? No. No. That, what the fuck? That's such a dumb question. How do you improve yourself without having a high opinion of yourself? Surely if you thought you were like a, like a 2 or something, like... Oh, that's so frustrating. Having a high self-esteem is half of the battle to, like, moving on. When you are depressed and when you're not feeling well then that's when you are the least productive within society. So having a higher opinion of yourself can only help you achieve your dreams. It might not help you as well as you would hope, but it's the... It, 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 mm, mm. I, I don't like this. No, no, not at all. Isn't the first step towards improvement admitting you're not perfect? You're right. Yes. You're perfect. We just said we we're were tens. tens. That doesn't. You didn't say that being on a scale of one to ten, ten being perfect. Fact, well, seven, well, what would be what would be perfect then? On a scale of one to ten. There is no perfect, really. So this is clearly exactly. a setup to catch them out on a contradiction. You know, exactly. you claim that women are best at. There is no perfect, but you never said that being a ten was perfect. Like, you're just trying to catch people in a lie, but like, you're not really doing that, unless you dishonestly frame it. And this is the thing, like, they expect their audience to draw those lines. I talk about this a lot. Uh, by the way, I'm installing shit in the background as well. That's why I'm, like, quiet self-improvement, yet you call yourself a 10. How can you claim to be good at self-improving when, according to you, you're already perfect? There are a few issues here, though. Firstly, and most obviously, these questions don't necessarily contradict. Someone can call themselves a 10 and still want to self-improve because the 1 to 10 scale is a made-up thing. It's not real, it's not science. And because it's made up, not everyone will interpret or answer this question in the same way. What one person might consider a 10, another person might consider a 6. What one person might consider a strict looks-maxing scale that you must abide by like a religion, or else you're a conceited femoid that's hurtling headfirst at the wall, another person might be normal and view it perhaps as an opportunity to express confidence, yes. to gas themselves and their friends up during a night out on the Las Vegas uh, Strip. No, and the latter is how the majority of the women... I'm not necessarily um, in agreement there. Like, there are some people that uh, I don't care, or don't give a fuck um, what they're... whether they're honest. Like, for, to me, just being honest just means... Ah, hold on a second. I need to look this up. EDSM Galaxy Data. I'm um, installing some Galaxy Data. All right. What is this? 1.99. Wait, what? Talking about this as if, all right, so ED Discovery um, downloads star data from EDSM, and so the bigger the storage needed, they're talking, like, I'm expecting, you know, like 100 gigabytes. They're talking about 2.53 gigabytes, like, or like, you know, maybe 5 gigabytes total, max, if that. All. Hold on, I do need to take a quick break, though. So.
Don't go anywhere. Or do. Either way, though, I will be back after this short break. <laughs> Also, I want to figure out how this, um, how all this, um, tag shit works. Because the tags, add tag, enter my own tag. Uh, ah! Tag. Wait, so the, are the tags now, wait, the tags are now, like, like, you can add whatever you fucking want? What the fuck? Alright, wait. Ooh. So I can add up to 10 tags now. They've changed the tag system. Challenge run, first playthrough, art commissions, backseat gaming, uh, social. Ah. Uh, what other tags? Yeah. And um, what else? Any ideas? Any ideas for good for good tags? Um. Yeah. I do like that, um, I can add my own tags now. I think that's good for now. Yay, we've got our own tags. Uh, all right. It used to be that the tags were all, like, excuse me. 
hitting OK on that. All right. Oh, cool. Well, it's working now. Let's continue. Interviewed seemed to take this question. Let's see how Achito views it. Rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. Hands across the board. Oh, period. Okay, there's having self-confidence and being happy with how you look. And then there's this weird self-worship that they're doing. A 10 isn't below average. It's not average. It's not even above average. It is literally perfect. I'm sorry, but you're not perfect. Isn't the first step towards improvement admitting you're not perfect? You're right. We yes. were perfect. We just said we, we were, were okay. tens. That doesn't, you didn't say that being, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being perfect. Facts. Well, well what, would be, what would be perfect then? On a scale of one to there ten. is no perfect, really. Yeah, I don't think anything has to be said about that one. I think the delusion just speaks for itself. There is no perfect on a scale from one to ten. Uh, yeah, there is actually. It's ten because you can't go higher than ten. So I find Achito's reaction here very eleven interesting to watch because for those of us who did the reading, we know that this is exactly how the interviewer wants him to react. The anger in his reaction, this pure resentment. Yeah, there is actually. It's ten. This interviewer knows what he's doing. He knows that guys like Achito are going to uncritically consume these videos and walk away with the conclusion that all of the women that call themselves tens must be delusional, arrogant, and what did he call it? Self-worshipping? The only way for this audience of men to be happy here is if the women rate themselves accurately, which really means how much I, the male audience member, want to fuck them. The men are there to either see these women put themselves down or have themselves held accountable by the interviewer, who is pointing out their delusion. And neither of these are good things, in my opinion. And so the rest of Achito's video is him basically making this same point over and over again, that calling yourself a 10 is self-worship and that these women need to humble themselves. Did you not hear that girl earlier who was like, yeah, I'm the prize, the men are the wallet. Yeah, she needs to be humbled. What? Like, what? He blatantly ignores where the women directly counter these points by saying, that despite rating themselves as tens, there still always is room for improvement. So like, there's always room for improvement. We just think highly of ourselves, yeah. but there's always room for improvement. We just think highly of ourselves. Well, isn't the first step towards improvement admitting you're not perfect? No, it just means that there's room to grow, right? Yes. Like, literally no. He ignores the moments where the women try to explain that everyone should want to rate themselves a 10, because everyone should at least try to be confident. I think people, everybody exactly. should think highly yes. of themselves. You, you should, should too. All the way yep. on the outer you space. Should. Okay, they're just talking actual nonsense at this point, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna interject. Uh, yeah. Why does he ignore these things? Because they don't fit the narrative. The narrative that he has uncritically accepted from this interview channel. The same narrative that I was trying to explain in my video, the video that he just ignored. And, you know, perhaps I could have been clearer or more concise about my explanation. Maybe if I'd started immediately by showing examples and giving reasoning, he'd have actually made it to the end. I think if I were given an opportunity to go back in time to make this video again, I would probably try to do that. But I don't know. That seems like an unfair standard to uphold. Because yeah, even when exactly. Achito hears my prime- I mean, this is the thing though. You're never going to change the mind of someone like this dude. Like this dude is never going to have his mind change at the end of the day. It's, it's always going to be, um, Oh gosh, that hurts my eyes. Um, it's always, it's always, they're always going to just be um, shit to you. Night vision, night vision looks good. I'm looking, I'm just looking at the different options on this thing. Primary arguments, he either misconstrues them or mocks them or ignores them entirely. And I don't think any amount of structured argumentation could have stopped this from happening. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Who knows? Anyways, let's move on to the next point. We, as men and boys, might want to view this media with a more critical eye, especially as it pertains to the narratives that we draw from what we are seeing. Narratives about the nature of women, modern females, and other stuff like that. Okay, so this is, I guess, a little bit good because he's being somewhat insightful. Yeah, you should always think about stuff that you see with a critical lens. Like, I I'm obviously very pro-critical thinking, but is he, like he's saying, oh yeah, dude, I'm so pro-critical thinking, but then makes a three-word title, Incel Street Interviews. That's not looking at this whole thing very critically. You seem to have summed it up and put it in a very small box. So critical thinking is defined as the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. That video title, Incel Street Interviews, was my judgment on the content after analyzing it in my video. If you disagree with this judgment, that's fine, but you need to explain why. And it would help also if you actually watch the video. But until you do either of those things, no, you are not thinking critically about this topic. Now, there is definitely an argument to be made there about the reductive nature of YouTube titles, how we are incentivized to narrow broad topics down to titles that may not be 100% accurate to the content, but are the most clickable. However, if we're using reductive titles as a metric for our ability to think critically, what's going on here? Pathetic male feminist tries to own me. We critically analyzed that interaction earlier. This is not what happened, is it? Seems like it's being put into a very small box there. Or a better example, Achito's video, Psycho- no, I mean, like, here's the thing, like, you, I, this is my biggest issue, I think, is that it seems to me like people, like, y'all just give them way too much, um, way too much, uh, what 
way too much credit for for being essentially just shit at the end of the day. Is that bright? Oh gosh, it's still a bit bright. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. And the grid border. That'll be close enough, maybe. Sorry, I'm just um Yeah, much better. I'm just trying to figure out um a good way to do the um some stuff. TikTok mom accidentally gets exposed, where he watches a clip posted by the libs of TikTok Twitter account of a mom supposedly being exposed by her son for convincing him to be gay. I am gay or a lesbian or any of that. She doesn't care. All she cares about is that I'm a part of it. And if I'm not a part of it, she'll try to convince me to uh, um, get, join it because I... What? Are you sorry right now? Nah, let him finish. Let him finish because he almost just exposed you, bro. Bro literally said if I'm not a part of the LGBT community, my mom would try to convince me to join it. Nah, bro, that is not right. But later on in that video, Achito plays the full clip in context and acknowledges that the mom was not doing that, that she had not been exposed, and that the kid had misspoke. Why would I convince you? I would convince that's why you. I should speak instead of you. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever convinced. Do you know what the word convince means? Yeah. Convinced means that I'm making you be something. Okay, so it's good that the mom eventually said, like, yeah, I wouldn't force my kid to be gay or LGBT because that's sort of what it was sounding like for a little bit. Yet the title remains. Psycho TikTok mom accidentally gets exposed. Dishonestly framing the content in this way is playing into the whole gay agenda LGBTQ groomer panic. One that is stoked yep. by demonic accounts like libs of TikTok and then echoed by useful idiots like Achito and has- And like it's just it's just part and, part and parcel for all of this shit. At the end of the day that's just this is just what people- that, this is just the dishonest shit that people push led to literal hate crimes. Just yesterday, another bomb threat was called into the Boston Children's Hospital, all over a false story not unlike this one being spread by that media pipeline. Is this what we are calling critical thinking now? Because I disagree. I disagree. I want to play a related clip here from later on in the reaction. In many ways, it's actually just pushing its own version of the status quo. The one where we take street interview clips and from them surmise that women ought to be seen and understood as liars. Like, who is saying that, bro? Only you are saying that. Like, okay, yeah, sure, there's probably one, two, maybe three people who actually will watch one of these videos and think, oh my god, women are awful. But those people are just like they're just not even worth dealing with the majority and i mean strong majority of people who watch this sort of stuff like me and my audience we don't like hate women like what are you talking about so here achito disputes my claim that this channel wants women to be seen and understood as liars he says that there is a maximum of three people that interpret this content in the way that i am describing however as i showed in my video this is not the case the following were just a few comments from the street interview comment section never underestimate a woman's ability to avoid accountability at all costs i had an argument with my eight-year-old niece yesterday okay. i truly believe the thought process and childish antics between my niece and these women are no different. The level of egos with these below average women is astonishing. These statements, which all generalize women as being childish, irresponsible, or egotistical, have all been favorited by the It's Complicated account owner. Additionally, while Achito's comment section isn't quite as bad as the street interview comment section, there are definitely still some iffy comments. These women are a 12 out of 10 on the stupidity scale. I hate that some women act like this, it's embarrassing. They just take one insignificant aspect They're about themselves everywhere. and try to make it praiseworthy because they have nothing to bring to the table. What in the narcissist is going on here? Seriously, the selfishness and overall negative personality qualities is 12 out of 10. Now, I'm not going to say that these comments are proof that misogyny is creeping into this guy's audience. Everyone interprets this content in their own ways, and it's very possible that this is just a Cheeto's young audience echoing his energy on this topic. But to deny that there's any possible link here between these spaces and misogynistic rhetoric, just because you feel like there isn't one and you refuse to explain why, well, that's not thinking very critically in my opinion. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about today is one of the things that seemed to bother Achito the most about my video. It was my comment about Kevin Samuels, where I called him the late not-so-great Kevin Samuels. The late not-so-great Kevin Samuels. What? Bro, this guy died last year, and you're like shitting on him? Are we just gonna skip over that, bro? This guy died of a heart attack, and you're like shitting on his takes post-mortem? What? That's so, like, low. Like, by the way, this is a guy who's gonna complain about fatphobic comedy being hurtful, but at the same time has no issue just shitting on a guy who died of a heart attack, like, a year ago. Like, what's wrong with you? Like,
Like, everybody who thinks this guy has such a good moral compass because he's gonna call fatphobic comedy hurtful and violent or whatever, he's just gonna go and do this and nobody bats an eye? Okay. So, Achito here says that criticizing Kevin Samuels' takes post-mortem is low of me to do. And at first, I wanted to ask why? You know, like, just because someone dies, does that mean we're not allowed to criticize their actions in life? Is it by virtue of the recency of his death that this has upset him? He mentions that Kevin Samuels died just at the end of the day, it's just like, fucking, it, it doesn't matter, I don't give a fuck about, like, whether you're dead or alive, if you've got shitty views, you've got shitty views, fuck off. Um, it's worse if you're alive, but, like, Kevin Samuels, like, why should I show Kevin Samuels any respect? last year, if that's too I soon, anyone. then when am I able to make this comment? But then I thought about it and realized that, well, based on the content oh, yeah. that Cheeto probably is surrounded with, which is without a doubt closer to the manosphere than I am, Cheeto might just have no idea why that comment is, in my opinion, justified. And he's someone who might actually benefit from hearing an explanation. So let's do that. Kevin Samuels sucked not because he had a heart attack, but because he was a misogynist, a grifter who built a massive platform by exploiting the embarrassment and degradation of women, specifically black women. He parroted conservative talking points and misogynoir to a million dudes online, who went on to spread this message across the web and world. A message that focused primarily on humbling women and holding women accountable, which when done on the internet via content and to women you do not know, is really just code for putting women down. We've been over this. It's the same thing we saw Achito do in his reaction. She needs to be humbled. What? Like what? <laughs> it's the same thing we've seen Sneeko doing in prior videos. Why is this fat ugly bitch still talking about ugly people? You are literally the ugly bitch of the group. She's so gassed up up right now and you're a three bitch you're a fucking three the same thing that the interview channel wants them to be doing shout out to this complicated channel got some great content over there when does it become harassment that's why i love the shout out to this complicated channel i love a lot of the questions that men ask so all of this does fall under the not so great classification in my opinion if you want to learn more about kevin samuels and why he's bad i'd highly recommend fd signifier's latest video on the black manosphere i'll leave that linked in the description it is feature film length but you should still watch it because we do need more healthy boys so to close this out video. i just want to reiterate that this video is not my attempt to cancel the guy i was talking about i don't want to do that and even if I did, that's not how YouTube as a platform works. Achito and others like him will continue putting out content on this website and no response video will get in the way of that. However, I do think that exposing people, whether that's content creators or their audiences, to other perspectives on how we can improve the way that we operate in this content creation space may be beneficial in the long run. I think that a lot of the examples we looked at today are pretty widespread issues on YouTube. A good portion of this platform still does not understand why making comments about people's weight or using ableist slurs or blindly supporting misogyny. Samuels do? Oh, Kevin's having us, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Agnostic narratives. None of this is all that funny or epic. Many people, audience members and creators alike, lack the ability <sighs> or willingness to critically engage with content from creators that they disagree with before jumping to conclusions and forming judgments about them. I'm guilty of this. We all are. It's human. It's also the way these platforms are designed. We're incentivized algorithmically to churn out low effort choir preaching content every day because it will pile up more views over time and make us more money in the long run. It's also just easier. And that's the most valid reason to want to do something in my opinion. But all these things come in a cost. Right? <laughs> they come at the cost of our ability to understand one another, to have some sort of integrity as content creators, and to discuss ideas and events in an honest way. And the only way to fight against this, at least the only way that I can think of, is to hold one another accountable. And no, I don't mean holding femoids accountable accountable. I mean identifying specific examples of where creators or commenters might have got something wrong and explaining why in a calm and collected manner. This seems to help a lot from the short time that I've been trying to do it. So yeah, anyways, uh, that's all I wanted to say today. As I mentioned, let me know what you thought of this response video format. I might do more of these. Who knows? Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the links below and use code NS555% off your first. It's a lot harder to react to like um, content creators that actually like because, you know, like they, they're saying a lot of the things that I'm thinking. I, I, and I said yesterday, like, fuck, that's why I made sure I didn't watch this video until today. I wanted to look at this um, Cheetos dude before then and like it was be it's just beautiful cringe beautiful cringe it's just a gift it's amazing like I, I love it I love it I hope he never stops making content for me to react to it's it's it's, it's great it's, it's 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 my kind of like cringe I love cringe like that it's 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 so so much fun to watch um yes so I guess uh, I can show you what I've been working on a little bit uh, i moved back to the desktop stream um i've installed edd uh, edsm uh what is it no edd discovery and uh, edfx are both uh installed and ready to go um updating the system stuff doing scar what is it this guy doesn't seem like too bad you mean kevin uh you mean uh, uh noah no, I said it's a BDSM. <laughs>
so there's it, the Elite Dangerous Market Connector, but I don't think I really need that one on here. But um, trying to figure out how to manage add-ons. I don't think I have any add-ons installed. Eh. 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 Okay. Didn't like that for some reason. Well, maybe it was like looking for them. It was looking for them. All right. So wait, what are these? Oh goodness, I can't see through this. I need to change the settings a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look. Tools. Manage add-ons. Now I can see them. Action files. What's this one? Oh, here we go. So this is the Canon flag. This is allows, uh, enables EDD to feed the Canon network with Canon network. I don't know what the Canon network is. And a network. And a network. Uh... So we're doing a little bit of uh, setup now, I guess. Have I changed my stream information yet? Chatting. Oh, why is the stream fucked up again? Oh, good. Okay. Wait, are my tags gone? Did my tags get fucked up? <laughs> nope, they're still there. Good. Thank fuck. Too horny? Is that possible? So, Canon Research. Canon Research Group in Elite Dangerous. Uh, it was recently compromised and used by the target to attempt to commit fraud. Uh, Discord has been dis destroyed. Okay, so that sucks. What is the Canon Research Information Codex? Oh, okay, cool. All right, I'm just gonna install that. Uh, chat console. Hey, captains, uh, tasks from the in-game chat, such as. Slash in new captain's log cat entry system note uh, voice control vocalizes events caused by joystick and key and mouse bindings. That sounds interesting. I wonder what that sounds like. JKMB2, what's this one? Uh, it's control key code functions to control the pop-ups and the three configurable fig, configurable views on the travel page. Function key. Oh, and an, uh, an OBS pack. That's interesting. I'm interested to hear what this does. So those are my add-ons, I guess. Oh, what's this? Set of replacement icons. Uh, I don't really care. Yeah, cool. Right, history. Installed. Restart a... The output files are stored. I don't know. Cheat. Ah. Hmm. 
Now I just need to figure out how to do the pop out information. Aha. Here we go. Now I can look at the uh, information wherever I am. System information, work things out that way. Oh, and I can turn on and off the stuff that I don't need. Oh, cool. Display system name, yes. You some buttons. Whoa, what happened? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is really cool. So how do I find, yeah, no more, no more ship information, home, zero, state, it's normal, open, what's this one then, display, station buttons, station buttons, which one is that one? Station buttons. Station buttons. Well, but I don't need station buttons if I've got those ones there. This is uh, those things there. What's what's the MR? Micro resources count. Micro resources. Missions. Really need fuel level, cargo count. Yeah, that could be useful. Data count, materials, MR, micro resources count. Let me just have a look at the micro, what the micro resources are. I'm still, I, it's been a while since I played this game, so I'm still, um, still, uh, remembering it. Late dangerous. I think it's like, um, I think this is uh, for the, um, game mode, don't really need that, travel trip stats, mission list, pretty good, come back y'all.
This is cool. I'm liking this. All right, so what else do I put down? Nearest stars? No, I don't need. I don't need the log in there. Scan. Ah, yes. I'll need to fiddle a bit with this. What the fuck? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Visibility for this video when transparent. Taskbar icon. There we go, transparency. That's so cool. I do like that. So that's transparency. All right, so control. And then I have to hold shift for it to work. So that's transparency options there. And then toggle visibility for this window when transparent. Toggle window on top of each other's of others. Ah, good. Yes, this is the Elite Dangerous config. Config. I don't I won't know if this one's good until I um until I've got um the game running, but at the very least I'm gonna put it on top of other things. Shift. <sighs> Well, now, is there anything else I should have up? <sighs> Whoa, five add-ons. Oh, that's the add-on manager. Sweat. There we go. Combat. Video map. Bookmarks. Discoveries. Compass. What? Does a compass look like? Okay, it's just a compass. Discoveries. It's this one. Don't know what that is. Engineering. Ooh, engineering. Holy shit. I'm going to have to learn how to do um, engineering uh, stuff again. There was another like uh, software as well, which helped. Oh wow, it's actually got the pictures of them and everything. These are just them. Hey, I think I've seen her. need to learn how that works. Expedition, log, market data. It'd be cool to learn all of this stuff. Material trader. Hey, here we go. Micro resources. Hmm. 
I don't think I have any of that though. Route finder. Suits at what? Wait, what's Spanch? Spanch. Oh, oh, Spanch. I remember Spanch. Yeah, Road to Riches, that was a thing as well. Ah, cool. Yeah, Spanch is, um, so it would be like what you use to search certain things. Spanch is really useful for, um, searching for, like, material, places where you can, like, find materials and stuff. Um, mining overlay. One bits left, cargo left. That would be interesting to see what that does. Mission overlay. But, uh, system information two. Oh no, that's what I've got already. Trilateration. That is synthesis. Oh, that's for making stuff. Ah, that's right. You can make stuff while you're out and about. Survey all. Wait, which one's the survey? What does this do? Trying to remember, trying to remember um, like which one's which. So I know there's one there which is. So it's the exploration of route overlay. What about scan? Which one is scan? Scan. Scan data on system. I think this is the one that I'm looking that I like. Stats, stats information. Oh, cool. Visited stars. Oh, cool. This is cool. I love this game. Ah, so I can have like several. Damn it! Why? I hate that option in in this fucking ah Windows. Why do you do this? Windows just like minimized everything on my fucking screen. I hate it.
Holy shit. Whoa. There's a lot of shit that you can search for. I don't know. Matt? Material list. I don't know. Carbon. Um, holy shit. How do I even use this thing? Okay, sleep well. I'm going to finish very shortly anyway as well. I, I honestly don't know how this works. But I've got a search button. not sleep though. Sleep is good though. That's pretty cool. Um, what else is cool? Expedition. Make up an expedition route. Okay. Faction rewards and trading tally. Ugh. I have no faction rewards. Okay. Grid. Yep. History. Um, Inara, Journal, Ledger, Ledger. Oh, hey. Money, 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 money. Discoveries, Observer List, Commodities. 
commodities commodity count oh so that's how much how many what oh so that's the um my uh EDVB Compass 2D map. What does the 2D map look like? Hello. I don't know what the point of that is, but it's a thing. Bookmarks. Captain's log. Combat. Committed crime. Nice. I might put a combat one in if I've got enough space. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That, that I think that's all of the stuff that I wanted to look at here. The only other thing I need to do is learn how to use the engineering stuff there so it was uh, this is the EDMC marker connector Coriolis, EDDI, EDDI. Oh, I can use voice to stove landing gear. Oh, I'm just looking at the different uh, mods that I can have for uh, the game uh, Elite Dangerous. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Companion app to show you in-game starter it's status and ah come back here. Where did it go? Elite Dangerous Engine. Yeah, that is the other one that I was using. Ugh. I don't want source code. I want the installer. There you are.
using the market data data panel. Hey. Alright, so I need to log in everything. I need to integrate all of this stuff, don't I? Which means I need an API key and all of that. In any case, though, I need to head off for the day. So, thank you for sticking around for the boring. Um, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you next time. But until then, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself and take care of someone else. Bye-bye.